Hi everybody, my name is Megan Davis and I'm the Teacher Education Specialist at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. Today we're going to be exploring the hidden world under rotten logs. We'll flip several different logs and walk through a who's who's list of the different critters you might find underneath. If you don't happen to have a log in your yard, but you can find a rock that's of manageable size that you can either pick it up or tilt it, then you're very likely to find lots of the same critters that you might find under a log under the rock. For our purposes today, it doesn't matter whether your rotten log comes from part of a wood pile that's waiting to be burned, or maybe an old wooden fence that has fallen down, or if you're able to get out and walk in the woods at a park nearby and you find pieces of a tree that have fallen over onto the ground. All of these different materials provide a unique type of habitat for creatures to live in and under. Underneath a rotten log is often cooler and darker and more damp than the surrounding environment. And that acts as a magnet to attract lots of different animals that might want to use the log as a temporary shelter to cool down or to lay their eggs there or to build a home or even to eat the wood itself. Once a tree is no longer alive, the dead tissues begin to break down through a process called decomposition. Many different organisms, but especially lots of different types of fungus and bacteria, play the very important role of breaking down the cell walls of the wood so that nutrients like carbon and nitrogen and phosphorus can return to the soils so that they're available for plants and other animals to use. We call the species that help carry out this process of decomposition either decomposers or detritivores because they feed on detritus, that dead and decaying organic matter. Many of our decomposers are very small invertebrates or animals without backbones. And they work their magic over a long period of time, often months or many years. So their work often goes unnoticed. Decomposers like termites, beetles and their larvae, millipedes, roly-polies, or slugs are definitely not the showiest or the most popular of creatures. In fact, lots of people think they're gross, but they deserve our utmost respect because they are vitally important to the recycling of nutrients in our ecosystem, helping turn dead things into life once again. So as we explore today, we want to take a couple safety precautions so that we can stay safe. You'll notice that I have on long pants and shoes and socks because I'm gonna be kneeling on the ground today. We also wanna keep our eyes and ears open and watch out for poison ivy that we don't wanna kneel down in and for the buzzing of stinging insects like yellow jackets that like to make their nests in the ground. And we want to avoid all of those things. But most of the critters we might encounter today can't hurt us and in fact, you might want to take a closer look at some of them. So you might want to bring along an empty container that will help you temporarily catch them so that you can take closer observations. Today I happen to have a takeout container that has an empty damp paper towel inside so that any of my creatures will be happy for the few minutes that I'm looking for them. If you happen to have an empty peanut butter jar with some holes poked in the top or some other kind of bug container, then you're all set. Let's go explore some logs to see who we can find. Come on. Once you find a log that you'd like to flip, make sure you've double checked for poison ivy and stinging insects. If it's all clear, then you're ready to go. We always want to roll any log that we find towards us, just in case there's any snakes living underneath. That gives them a free path of escape away from our body and puts the log as a nice convenient barrier between us and them. And that way, if we needed to move backwards, we could do that very quickly. So once we're ready to go, I'm gonna put my two hands on the log. Oh, don't forget to open your container to catch any critters that might be underneath. Here we go. Ooh, got beautiful black and yellow millipede, a slug, 
earthworm. Different kind of millipede. Ooh, a snail. Two snails. Once you've got your creatures set, then you can slowly roll the log back to its original position and resettle any of the leaf litter around it that you might have disturbed, leaving it just exactly as you found it. That way, this habitat is not disturbed for any of the creatures living under your log. Then, once we check out our critters, you can bring them immediately back to the log and release them around the edges. You never want to roll the log over again, put them down, and then roll it back. That would squish them like a pancake, and we don't want to do that. So, we've got our log put back. Let's go check out who we found. As you begin to look closely at your creatures, you might feel overwhelmed by not knowing what they are, but don't worry. It's always a good idea to start by counting the number of legs. This information can tell you a lot about your critter. If a creature has no legs at all, it's probably some type of worm, a slug or a snail, or possibly a snake. Some creatures, like the larva of flies and beetles or moths, might appear at first to have no legs, so you might also group them in this category too. If it has four legs, it's a vertebrate, an animal with a backbone. And of the creatures you're likely to encounter under a log, the most likely are salamanders or lizards. But most of the creatures you'll probably find will be invertebrates, animals without a backbone, and many will be arthropods, animals with an exoskeleton, segmented bodies, and jointed appendages. When you count their legs, insects have six legs, spiders, granddaddy longlegs, and mites have eight legs, roly-polies and sow bugs have 14, and millipedes and centipedes have more than 14 legs. I'll start first with my creatures that have no legs. The worm I found is round and has a segmented body. It's commonly called an earthworm. Some people call them night crawlers. Earthworms are incredible decomposers, eating lots of organic matter and burrowing down into the earth. They are widely considered beneficial for introducing more air, water, and nutrients into the soil. You might also find a different kind of worm with a flattened, non-segmented body and a head shaped like a hammerhead shark. These shovel-headed flatworms are actually predators and eat earthworms. Two of the other legless critters I found were a slug and a snail. The soft, wet bodies of slugs and snails mean they need to stay moist to stay alive. And so we often find them under logs where it's cooler and more damp. There are lots of species of slugs and snails, and sometimes it can be tricky to tell them apart. Many are decomposers eating decaying plant material, but some are carnivorous and will eat each other. Both slugs and snails secrete a slimy mucus that helps them move through the environment without drying out. Slugs don't have a shell, while snails do. Now let's move on to the critters at the other end of the leg spectrum, things with lots of legs. If your creature has a long, skinny body and there are too many legs to count, it's probably a millipede or a centipede. For the larger black and yellow creature I caught, if I look closely, I can tell there are two pairs of legs per body segment. It wasn't moving very quickly and it was fairly easy to catch. These are all clues that it was a type of millipede. In this case, the yellow and black flat millipede. If you handle them roughly, most millipedes will curl up into a ball. And some, like this species, can secrete a small amount of hydrogen cyanide as a defense mechanism, which leaves your hand smelling like cherries or almonds. Centipedes, on the other hand, only have one pair of legs per segment and are usually much faster. Additionally, as carnivores, they are venomous and can deliver a painful bite, so it's a good idea to not catch them barehanded. Under the next two logs I flipped, I found a nice comparison between the two, as well as some new creatures to examine. Under this log, the tiny, faster moving animal is a centipede, and it only has one pair of legs per body segment. The rest of these guys that are typically much slower moving and have two pairs of legs per body segment are greenhouse millipedes. 
And these animals typically only are an inch long and brown and could be found under rocks, logs, and even in your house where they sometimes become a pest. Let's check under this lock. Oh, gotta open my container. Ooh, lots of earthworms. Millipedes. Ooh, and look at all the roly polies. One of the most widely recognized backyard critters goes by many names roly poly, pill bug, sow bug, isopod, woodlouse, potato bug, and more. Whatever you call them, these terrestrial crustaceans are friendly decomposers that look like tiny armadillos. And what most people don't realize is that there are actually two different types that look almost identical. Do you notice any differences? When threatened, true roly-polies can roll up into a ball for protection from predators, making them look like a pill, hence their other name, the pill bug. Sow bugs, on the other hand, have a pair of tail-like appendages called cerci at their rear end and have slightly flatter bodies, meaning they cannot roll up into a ball. Instead, their defensive mechanism is usually to try to flee. They're typically much faster than roly-polies and harder to catch. Now let's go look under a few more logs to see what else we can find. Let's check under this log. Found one of my favorite creatures to find under the rotten logs, a best beetle. Also called a peg beetle because sometimes all you see is their abdomen sticking out of a hole. These guys like to chew into the rotten log and create cavities in which to lay their eggs. These are beautiful, totally docile beetles. Beetles are a group of insects that have six legs as adults, noticeable antenna, and hardened coverings called elytra that protect their hind wings, which they use to fly. In best beetles, the deeply grooved part of their exoskeleton are the elytra. Best beetles aren't as efficient at extracting nutrients from cellulose as termites, so it's important that they eat wood that has already started to be broken down by fungi and bacteria. Basically, it helps them pre-digest the fiber. As they chew their way through logs, they create the cavities or galleries like we saw in the previous log. And inside these galleries, they lay their eggs and fill, fill in around the eggs with previously chewed fibers and their poop, called frass. When the eggs hatch, the new larvae eat their parents' poop to help jumpstart their guts. Another cool thing about best beetles is that they usually live in family groups in the logs. And both male and female adults, as well as older siblings, all help take care of the youngest generation. Perhaps because of these complex social relationships that exist in the dark inside the log, both best beetle adults and grubs are capable of producing sounds by friction, called stridulation, and that helps them communicate with each other. Adults produce sounds by rubbing the hidden hind wings against a rasp-like structure called the par stridens on the upper surface of the body. Grubs produce sounds by rubbing the reduced third pair of legs against the thorax. They can produce up to 17 different sounds, the most elaborate system of sound communication known for any arthropod. When you pick up a best beetle, you might get to hear its characteristic squeaking or kissing sound. Previously, I've found best beetle adults and larvae under this log, but these larvae have six legs, and given the very large size of these grubs, I suspect that these are some kind of stag beetle, either a reddish-brown stag beetle or a giant stag beetle. Stag beetle larvae are frequently found in the same logs as best beetles, but almost 40% of all insect species in the world are beetles and a lot of them are decomposers, so we could potentially find any number of different creatures inside our logs. Some of the most commonly encountered are the stag beetles, click beetles, whose larvae are darker and skinnier and called wireworms, or other wood-boring beetles like the hickory borer, 
which prefers fresher, less decomposed wood. Beyond the beetles, you are very likely to encounter ants living in or under a rotten log. As insects, they have six legs and three body segments and usually have a very thin, pinched waist, bent antenna, and live in large colonies. Ant larvae are grub-like with no legs, while their pupa look like pill capsules. We have more than a hundred species of ants in North Carolina. Some are decomposers and scavengers, some eat mostly plants, and others are carnivores. A fun fact about those big black carpenter ants that we sometimes find in logs or dead trees, they don't actually eat the wood. They're just tunneling through it and removing it as they expand their nests. Termites are another common insect of rotten logs. They typically have soft, more translucent bodies and straight antenna. And like ants, they are highly social and colonial with a complex structure of workers, soldiers, and a queen. Termites are wingless, except during a swarm if they need to relocate their colony. Feared by many people because of the damage they can do to wooden structures, as well as logs in the forest, termites are the ultimate decomposers. They are highly efficient at breaking down cellulose thanks to symbiotic microbes in their guts. In the forest, termites from a single colony may forage more than 200 feet away from their nests. The last two big groups of insects we might find under a log are roaches and earwigs. Roaches have broad, flattened bodies with a small head and very long, flexible antenna. You're most likely to encounter species in the wood roach or Parcoblata genus, which are decomposers that live in forested areas and eat organic matter. These roaches are different than the German cockroaches you might find inside your home. Earwigs have an elongated, flattened body, beaded antenna, and most noticeably, a large pair of appendages called cerci at the tip of their abdomen that are modified as pinchers. Earwigs are scavengers or predators that come out at night to feed and like to hide under logs during the day. Under this log, I found an eight-legged critter, an arachnid. The daddy long legs or harvestman that I found is often confused for a spider, but they are actually in a different order. Spiders have two body parts, a cephalothorax and an abdomen, while daddy long legs only have one main body part. Additionally, spiders usually have six or eight eyes, use silk for their webs and egg sacs, and are carnivores, while daddy long legs have at most two eyes, don't make any silk at all, and are decomposers or scavengers. Lots of people might have heard that daddy long legs are the most venomous creature for their size, but that's a myth. It's incorrect. They do not have venom or fangs, and they can't hurt you. However, we do need to be careful while flipping logs and watch out for the black widow spider, which is venomous and can deliver a painful bite which might require medical attention. While they aren't decomposers, it's always exciting to find a vertebrate with four or no legs under your log. As the summer approaches and it gets hotter and drier outside, Reptiles and amphibians will increasingly use the cool, damp shelter of rotten logs to thermoregulate. Amphibians, like salamanders, need to stay moist to be able to breathe through their skin, and many different species could be found under a rock or log. Who you find depends largely on where you are geographically located in our state. Salamanders in the Plethodon family, which are entirely terrestrial and lungless, meaning they only breathe through their skin, are commonly encountered. Examples include the slimy salamander and the redback salamander. On the reptile side of things, any species of lizard in North Carolina could seek shelter under a log or rock, but lizards in the Plestiodon or skink family with smooth scales are quite commonly found. Skinks often lay eggs in or under rotten logs. And lastly, any species of snake in North Carolina could seek shelter under a log or rock, but some are more likely than others. Worm snakes, brown snakes, red-bellied snakes, ring-neck snakes, smooth earth snakes, and rough earth snakes all frequent rotten logs in search of prey. One of my very favorite things to find if I flip a log is the tiny worm snake. This beautiful North Carolina native doesn't even get a foot long as an adult. And it's this beautiful grayish brown with smooth scales on top and a beautiful pink belly underneath. 
These snakes are very friendly in your hands, even if they are a little bit wiggly like the worms that they eat. These guys have a very small but pointed head with teeny tiny eyes and they use that pointed head to burrow into the earth and, and rotten logs in search of worms, which is their primary prey, hence their name, the worm snake. The only other part of them that you might feel is this tiny point on their tail, which they like to poke into you in an attempt probably to make you drop them and release them back into their home. A fun and really cute find that you might encounter under a rotten log. It was fun to have you with us today as we learned all about the critters that live under rotten logs and how important they are to the recycling of nutrients in our ecosystem. I hope you have fun exploring under rotten logs or maybe stones in your backyard or a park near you. Bye!